Hi everyone, we're going to be creating a springtime garden and I'm going to show you how to um, draw the outline using simple shapes and then after that we'll go ahead and we will color in our beautiful drawing. I'm going to go ahead and put this sample to the side and what you're going to need is just a piece of paper and you can use anything to draw the outline. I'm going to go ahead and use a marker but you could use crayons, you could use a pencil or whatever you have on hand. And we're going to start out just with a few simple shapes and I'm going to make a little curvy little daisy right in here and I'm moving very very slowly. I'm going to stop right there and right in the center we're going to make a circle. Okay, right around the central flower we're going to now just make some simple curves going up and down with our marker. You're going to want to go ahead and make sure that you draw these initial lines very slowly because you're learning some new skills and you don't want to go too fast and just follow along exactly what I'm doing. We're going to come back now and just make some curvy lines right around this little center here, just going up and down, creating the flower petals. And we're going to stop right there. So there's our main flower. And you can also just come in between with some lines, and this creates petals right in here. Okay. So I'm going to move over to this flower and we're going to start out now with a circle and then you can make some long lines that curve around and then come back around and touch the circle and you just want to go ahead and make the exact same shape all around the center of your flower and then come back and touch the circle Come up and over and all the way around, touching the center. And then we'll go ahead and do one more. And then once you have those petals, then you can go ahead and do the exact same thing, starting here, going around. But this time you're going to make your loop a little bit larger and come back and touch the center all the way around, up and over coming right to the center, coming up and over and touching the center and all the way until you have completed your flower. And then we're going to go ahead and work on this other big flower here. We will start with a circle and we're basically going to do the same technique where you just take your marker and you come up and over just like a little mountain coming up and over all the way around the central circle and then we're going to do the same thing except we're going to go a little bit closer this time coming over touching the center over coming, touching the center all the way around and this time we're going to create a couple of little lines inside these petals just tiny little lines that actually touch the circle and you can even put a couple of dots just to create a little pattern in the middle to make it a little bit different and then once we have this small flower we're going to actually come around the flower all the way up and touch the other side of the circle and then we'll create some petals and basically these are some skinny little curves that come up and around. Kind of think about those like the letter M. Coming up and over, up and over, up and over, dipping in and then going down to the center, up and over. And then another one, all the way around the circle. See that? all the way around and then touching right here. So there we have our flowers. Alright, 
So now we're going to go ahead and create some stems because these little flowers are going to be growing in this happy little garden. So we're going to want to go ahead and start with the one in the middle. This is kind of a wiggly line. And once you have one line, then you're going to go ahead and create another line next to it. And then we'll also do this other flower here. And then put another skinny little line right here. These are creating the stems. And of course, we're going to want to go ahead and do the same thing, creating the stem for this other flower. Okay. Now we're going to move on and create some of the leaves. And I'm going to show you how to create these with a very easy shape. You want to make a little shape that's around curve like this. This is basically a teardrop shape. And you start with the point and then you want to make a little curve and come all the way around coming back to the point. And once you have this shape then you can just go ahead and put a line and that makes a little leaf that connects to the stem. And let's try the same thing with this other teardrop shape. I'm going to make these leaves a little bit smaller, so all I'm going to do is just start with a point, then come around, all the way around the curve, and then put a line right through the leaf shape, and then over here I'm going to come all the way around to the point, and then put a line right through the leaf shape. And uh, let's go ahead and do the same thing for this big flower here. We're just going to create a, another leaf starting with a point and then we're going to come all the way around and then here's the curve and come back all the way to a little point. It's our little teardrop shape and then come back with a line all the way through. And let's do another one over here. Now you're going to want to draw these really slowly in the beginning just so you can get lots of practice. It does take practice to get these looking good. And another one over here, all the way around, right to the point, and then just drawing a line right through. And then we're going to do another leaf right here. And then we're going to draw the line right through and connect that with the stem. Now for this flower, I'm going to show you a different type of leaf because if you study flowers, you'll see that they have all different kinds of shapes for their leaves. And this one over here has a little line and it has a teardrop shape, but this time it's long and skinny. So we're going to start right here at this point and then we're going to make a curve and then we're going to come back to the point. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, just make a little line and then we're going to draw a long line that curves around and comes back to the point. And as these grow on the stem, we're going to make them a little bit smaller. Okay, here's another one, a little bit smaller shape. And then some other ones here. These ones, we're not going to put a stem, we're just going to attach them right to the main stem. One here another one on the other side so and then a little bit smaller as they grow down to the bottom of the stem all right so then I'm going to come back now and let's draw another flower up here just for fun this time I'm going to take my other marker which is a little bit wider so you get a thicker line I'm going to draw a circle and then I'm going to come and do some little curved lines all the way around the center circle. And then I'm going to make a different type of leaf this time. I'm going to start with a curvy line that comes up and it curves in and it goes out. And let's just make a few of these. There we go. Now just remember Drawing these flowers takes practice, but is so much fun. Okay, and then the other line here that curves and dips in. 
little curves come all the way around to the flower. Okay, there we go. So there's our main flower. And then we can go ahead and make these little lines that have dots on the end. There's a line with a dot all the way around the center. A line with a dot, lines with dots. Now I'm going to switch my marker and get a thinner one. And then I'm just going to draw a line right in the center. And then some little dots all around the central circle. And you'll notice how each of these flowers looks unique. So you can get really creative with these. We're going to come back with a skinnier marker and also make another little loop right inside these petals just for fun. Okay. And we're also going to come back and put some dots just around this little flower here. We're going to put a little loop inside these petals right around the center. And then we will come back and put some dots around this center. So each one looks different. Okay. And then I'm also going to do something else which I think will be really fun. I'm going to put some little lines right inside those little indents. And then on the end I'm going to make a little tiny circle. all the way around. Just making these look unique. For the next step we're going to start just drawing in some of the smaller flowers and I'm going to make a wiggly line right in here and then a little triangular shape for some of these pretty little flowers. There's another triangular shape here and then we're going to connect these to the little stem with the little curvy lines and a couple more right here and then you can also create some little loops to make some of those leaves and then I'm also going to make these little curly lines that come all the way around because these look like little vines a couple more here so there we have one pretty little flower and then we're going to put a curve, kind of like a small C, right on top of each of these flowers. Okay, because we want to put lots and lots of pretty flowers to create our spring garden. And then I'm also going to make a stem for this flower, which is a wiggly line that comes all the way down. And you're going to need some leaves, so we're going to put some loops long skinny loops all the way up to the top I'm getting a little bit smaller and then we'll put a couple more here so there we go maybe some bigger ones right on the bottom okay and you just want to fill your entire page with all kinds of flowers and I see that we have this flower here and this one is going to need some Leaves. So I'm going to show you another shape for a leaf, which is a curve. It comes to a point and then all the way down and connects with your little stem. And then you want to put a line through it. And let's do another shape with a line through it. And then a couple more pointy little leaves with lines right here. And then I'm going to show you how to draw a tulip and a tulip is like a U shape coming all the way around so there we have our U shape and then I'm going to go to the top of the tulip and then bring the line all the way down and then we're going to create another line that's sort of um, underneath this line right there and then a little curvy shape with some little centers which are little lines these are called stamen 
and that's sometimes what you see in the center of a flower. So we're going to go ahead and put a couple more of those right in here. And of course, a wiggly line all the way down to the ground because that um, represents our stem. And of course, we want to add a couple more little leaves. This time, I'm using my skinny pen to make some small little leaves. Your leaves can be all kinds of shapes and sizes because that's exactly what they look like in nature. All right, and you can also now move on um, and you can make any kinds of flowers that you want to fill your garden. You don't have to make it exactly like I have created mine. You can use your imagination. I'm now going to move on and show you how to make the bee and the butterfly. And all you want to do for the bee is make a little oval for its face and then another little oval that goes underneath for its body with some little stripes. It's a cute little bee. And then we want to make some curvy shapes here. Kind of like an upside down U for its wings. And of course round circles for its eyes. I'm going to give it a little smile. And some antenna, which are these little curly lines that curve around. And of course, just want to neaten this up a little bit. I'm going to switch over to my smaller pen right now and I'm going to give it some little lines for its wings. You'll notice that the wings of a bee, you can see right through them, they're almost transparent. And we're a little stinger and of course you need some little legs as well. Okay, so there's our bee. And then I'm going to show you how to make a butterfly. So basically you want to make a shape for its body, two little lines that connect. Okay. And then the way that you do a butterfly is you make one shape on one side, which is one line here. And then because uh, butterfly wings are symmetrical, then you want to do the exact same line on the other side. That will help you make it even. And then we're going to create another line underneath here. And then we want to do the same thing on the other side. And then we want to put one line here, one line here. And then the next step is we're going to go ahead and connect that with a little curve and a curve on the other side. And then I want to go ahead and put a line on this side and a line on the other. So make sure that when you're doing the butterfly wings, always remember to do the exact same on either side and then that help, helps it look more even and of course we need two little dots for its eyes little dot here and a little dot here and we're going to connect that with one of these thinner markers I'm going to go ahead now and make a little curly shape a little curved shape that goes over right here alright and I want to put some pretty markings on the butterfly wings so I'm going to create a curve on both sides I'm also going to come on the lower wings and put two little curves, one here and one next to it, and then a large circle and then a small circle. Of course, if we do it on one side, we want to do it on the other side. And then two circles that are overlapping each other. So we're going to create this really nice pattern because we can come back and add some color to this in a little bit. So basically, this is what our flower garden looks like. And you can fill in any gaps that you want with different kinds of flowers and you want to finish that and you can leave it just as a black and white drawing or you can also go to the next step which is we're going to add some. Okay so here we are with our finished outline. Now you can go ahead and just leave this like this if you would like to just have a black and white drawing or you can go ahead and color it in which can be really fun just adding some of those colors and making these flowers really pop. Um, you can use whatever materials that you want. I'm going to be coming and doing some details with a crayon over the top of this line drawing. And I have a yellow crayon. And I just want to show you some really great little techniques that you can use with a crayon. Now I'm just going to draw a line right around the center. Right in here. And I'm also going to take a pink crayon. And I'm going to just create some little 
curvy lines on this particular flower with this pink crayon. Okay. And then let me see what else we can do. Let's put some little yellow marks right on the center of this particular flower. And then I'm going to reach for one of my favorite colors to work with, which is bright pink. And I'm just going to take some out of my palette and I'm going to paint directly over the top of the crayon. Now the really nice thing about painting over crayon is that it actually creates a resist and that you can see some of those lines shining through. So it really gives you some nice texture. And of course, if you use a Sharpie marker, you can paint with watercolor right over the top. There we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some orange on my brush. If you don't have orange, I'm going to show you how you can mix your own. Here is some yellow. So you want to just make a puddle of yellow. Rinse your brush out though so, so that you don't get the, others color, the other colors mixing together. And then you want to just take a little bit of red and mix that in. And look, you have this beautiful orange. So what I'm going to do is go right over the top of where we put down some of those yellow curvy lines. And look at that. You can see how that crayon begins to show through. That's because um, it's called Crayon Resist. And I'm going to show you another way that you can create Crayon Resist. This time we're going to use a green. And I'm going to go ahead and make some little lines on this particular flower on its leaves. Those are little lines for veins. Okay, see those? And I'm going to put those on each of those leaves, little lines. And then we can come back. Let's go ahead now and mix up some green. You just take some lemon yellow. This is kind of like a light yellow. You can use any yellow that you have. And then you want to take some blue. Mix those together and look at that beautiful green. Okay. And then you go directly over the top using just the tip of your brush. And you want to work really slowly. Don't worry if you go over the lines. And then you can go ahead and just paint inside those shapes. And you can see how those green lines that we put down with the crayon, how they shine through um, the green paint. So that can really help make your little painting really interesting. All right. And then we're going to go ahead now and I'm going to take some of my yellow because yellow is one of my favorite colors. It's so bright and cheerful. And I'm just taking the point of my brush and look how I'm going around and around and just trying to stay in those shapes as well as I can. There we go, round and round. And I'm using the point of my brush that will really help you a lot. Okay, so there is some yellow. Now something else that's really fun is you can put down one color and you can go ahead and take another different color. This one's kind of an orangey yellow. And look, I'm just going to put some paint right over the top. And you can see because the layer of paint underneath is wet, how everything blends together on the page right around the center of that flower. This this technique is called wet into wet and that means when you put one color down and when it's still wet you can go ahead and paint another color over the top. All right and so now I'm going to go ahead and put some color on this flower here. I'm going to reach for some of my red and notice how I'm going around and around inside my palette color there and just painting these little shapes. When you're using watercolor, you want to also dip your brush a little bit in some water because that will make your paint spread. And then you want to slow down any time that you come around a tricky area like the circle. It's a good idea to go slowly in the beginning when you're learning new techniques. Okay, 
because each time you're painting and you're practicing you are going to get better and better okay and I'm just filling in those little petal shapes right in here and I'm slowing down when I go right around the curves just filling in the gaps alright and here we are just painting this is so much fun it's like working on a coloring book exactly the same thing except you can use paint if you want to fill these shapes in with crayon you can use crayons if you want to use colored pencils you can do that whatever works for you because either way it's going to look really nice once you're finished okay so then we have some of our main flowers now I'm going to show you how to mix a purple so what we're going to do is you can either take pink if you have pink available or even a red will be just fine any red on your palette okay and then you want to just grab some blue and mix those two colors together and then you can get a beautiful purple okay so I am going to use purple for this flower right here because purple is one of my favorite colors and there we go and just using the tip of the brush notice how I'm not painting the centers that's because I want to use a different color for the center of my flowers and I'm going to wait till it dries before I add any color to that I'm also going to go back into my pink and then I'm going to show you ooh isn't that a bright pink that is so much fun I love that color and I'm just going to go slowly and fill in all of those little shapes with some pink there we go all the way around the center of the flower and then I'm going to mix some orange again and remember that you want to take yellow but always be sure to swish your brush around two or three times to make sure you take all of the paint off the brush before you grab another color otherwise that's how your colors can turn to mud if you don't rinse your brush off we don't want that happening so there we are just going ahead now and making our very own beautiful bright orange and I'm going to use that for the center I'm also going to take some more color on my brush and because the pink is still has not dried I'm going to go right over the top and look at that that's called wet into wet when two colors start mixing on the paper and you can get some really interesting effects doing that I'm going to switch to a smaller brush and because now I want to start working on some of the leaves and I'm going to show you a couple more really fun ways to make some beautiful leaves and you can use green from your palette just like I have right now so I actually have some green and I'm going to show you how to mix your own green you want to take some yellow just a little puddle of yellow rinse your brush a couple of times and then you want to go and grab some blue and look at that we made our very own green it really is fun to experiment with mixing colors because you can come up with all different kinds of variations depending on what shades of yellow and um, blue that you actually use okay so now I'm gonna go fill that leaf in and I'm gonna kinda outline it on the inside and then fill it in and you can do the same thing if you're using crayons or colored pencils just kinda outline it like this first you wanna come inside here all the way around that little curve and then just fill it in that's a really easy way to put color um, on your shapes and then pulling this color down and then using the point of the brush just to fill in any of those little gaps so that we have that now those layers are still um, really wet so what I'm going to do now is show you how you can mix color on your paper I took a little bit of blue and look at that I just started touching the paper and then all of a sudden I got this different shade of green 
and I actually mixed it on the paper. I didn't mix it on my palette. Isn't that fun? So I really think that would be a fun thing for you to experiment with is this wet and wet technique. And you can do the same thing with crayons too because you can put down green and then you can put down a little bit of blue over the top and you'll get a very similar effect. All right. So this time I'm going to take lots more yellow and mix it into my puddle, rinsing my brush. And then now I get more of a yellowish green. And I'm just going to go ahead now, it's kind of like a lime green. I'm going to fill in these shapes. And then just using the tip of my brush, that's the best way for you to be able to fill these shapes in using the tip of your brush, especially when you want to start going quickly. And then, of course, I'm going to fill in the shape here of the stem, pulling that down. And also, I'm going to do the same thing with this one for the yellow flower. Let's go ahead and pull it down. So really, we're almost getting to a point where we're finished. I'm just going to show you how to paint the butterfly and the bee. And then I'm going to take some blue and I'm going to put one little stripe of color over here, one little stripe of color over here. I'm also going to put a little bit of purple because I love the color purple. And while everything is wet, then I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush in some pink and I'm going to go ahead and paint the wings. Do you notice how everything is blending together? That is the wonderful thing about watercolor is you can get some really interesting effects. Then I'm going to go ahead now and dip my brush in the yellow. Be careful to make sure that you swish your brush around a couple of times before you use the yellow. Same thing, I want to grab some more so I had to swish my brush. And then I'm going to touch just this little part. And what I'm doing is I am letting the paint mix on the paper. I'm allowing all those colors to mix together. And I'm painting a little bit more and also the middle of the butterfly. Do you see that? We get some really cool effects just like that. Okay, and then I'm going to come back over and put some yellow stripes with my small brush for my B. Okay. All right, we're just going to let that dry. Okay, so we're now on the final step of finishing our little painting and make sure that um, you do clean your palette off because from time to time because that'll help your colors stay nice and clean and um, what we're going to do right now is I'm going to show you the next step. We're going to take some of this black that I have here. It's actually a dark gray but it looks like black, doesn't it? And I'm going to use that to go ahead and paint some of the stripes on the little bee using a small brush. And when you're wanting to paint details, you want to use the tip of the brush, pulling that paint down. There you go. And I'm even going to use that same color, but I'm going to mix much more water with it so that um, it's a little bit thinner and just paint over the bee's face because bees actually do have a black face. There you go. So there's our little bee. And then you also can go ahead and paint on some of these um, other details on your painting. I'm using a green. You can mix your own green just by taking some yellow and rinse your brush out in between so you don't um, contaminate or make your colors looking muddy. So there we have some green. Mixing those two colors. And I'm going to use just the tippy tip of my brush and I'm going to move really slow around those little curves all the way down. So I have this small little viney flower here that has curly little leaves and, and stems. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill that in, going right over the top. Don't worry if sometimes the paint might just go over the lines a little bit because it actually can still look really nice. And here we go. There we are, just painting in those vines. And then the very last thing that we want to do is I'm going to 
put some blue on my brush and I'm going to go ahead and just paint over the top of these flowers. I want to fill in those flowers and you can make these flowers any color that you want. I just happen to like little tiny blue flowers. Okay, so there we are. We're all finished and what you're going to want to do is sign your name. It's a good idea to sign your name small. I just use my initials and I like to do cursive. You can, and my first and last initials, right there nice and small in the right hand corner of my artwork. And now it's completely done and we're ready to move on to our next fun project. So stay tuned.